In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate two saints, a Franciscan Saint, Saint Ludovic, Bishop, Confessor, First Order, and Saint John Hughes, Confessor. I wish to reflect briefly with you on the second saint that we celebrate. We give the priority to St. Ludovic in the liturgy because he's a Franciscan, he was of a noble family and he became a friar and then eventually was appointed a bishop. The second saint is St. John Hughes, confessor, who is very significant for us for his spiritual teaching and doctrine, especially for his great Mariology, the study of Our Lady, the Immaculate Heart of Our Blessed Mother, and the spread of his devotion. Who was St. John Hughes? was born in Normandy and was educated by the Jesuits. He was born in the 17th century, at the very beginning of the 17th century, and died in 1680. St. John had a very special devotion to our Blessed Mother since his childhood. Uh, in, he was from Paris, where he uh, joined a very good seminary already there in Paris, and uh, with his apostolate as a priest, he uh, founded first a congregation of priests, congregation dedicated to Jesus and Mary. The congregation itself is called the Congregation of the Priests of Jesus and Mary, and then he founded also a female religious order, the Sisters of Our Lady of Charity, especially to look after these prostitutes, to pull them out of that uh, life and to welcome them into a new life. Uh, St. John Hughes is very important for his uh, understanding of the devotion to the most sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary. He's the first saint who uh, develops this uh, joint devotion to the most sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary. It is very significant to remember also a masterpiece he wrote on the Immaculate Heart of Mary, the most admirable heart of the Mother of God. It's right, it's a mine of doctrine and spirituality. For example, to give you a little taste of his a great understanding of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, always united with the most sacred heart of Jesus. We can say that he uh, presented the Immaculate Heart of Mary as heaven on earth and as the very abode of God on earth. God abides here in the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And there are many symbols taken from the Old Testament which, well, describe this, uh, uh, the treasure, the hell, which is the Immaculate Heart of the Blessed Mother. There is one significant passage, in my opinion, which strikes a very important chord of theology and spirituality. And this is the fact, it's an analogy that St. John Hughes uh, uh, highlights between God in himself, the Holy Trinity, and the relationship between the Father and the Son, and Jesus as incarnate outside the Trinity, in relation with our Blessed Mother. As in God, the Son is always in the bosom of the Father. 
as the prologue of St. John says, the Son remains always in the bosom of the Father. He's generated eternally, but not created by the Father. So, the bosom of the Father outside the most holy trinity, so to say, is the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So outside the Trinity, in his incarnation and presence on earth, our Lord abode in the Immaculate Heart of Mary, which was resembling perfectly the bosom of the Father inside the Trinity. Our Lady united with the Father in relation with the only Son of God. So, this is important to understand how precious it is, the blessed and immaculate heart of our Blessed Mother. It is the tabernacle of God, where Jesus abides, where Jesus was formed, where Jesus came from. And this is also the reason of that intimate union between Jesus and Mary the most sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary. He cherished this devotion so much to also write a mass and the liturgy, a, a mass and the, uh, the office in honor of the most sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary, which was eventually approved by the church and given as a liturgical celebration. Pius XI, extended this celebration to the whole church. It's also historically speaking, it is very important, uh, this uh, saint, for the spirituality and devotion to the, the sacred heart of Jesus and then to the most, uh, the sacred heart of Our Lady. His contemporary of St. Margaret Mary Alacoque, as you know, she died 10 years after him. And by the end of her life, she got this special revelation by the most sacred heart of Jesus. Who wanted, he asked for reparation of all sins. But that spirituality was already there, was already present in that place, in, the, in Paris, in France, and little by little was spread. From this sacred heart, to Fatima, 1917, the request of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. But Our Lady, via the apparition of the angel, had already prepared the little shepherds to consider in the second uh, prayer of Fatima, the union between the most sacred heart of Jesus and Mary. And for the infinite merit of the most sacred heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I beg of you the conversion of all sins. The angel told the three little shepherds to pray and to make reparation for the sins against the Holy Eucharist. You see the unity and the Fatima message is explaining, expanding more on the importance of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Never to be detached from the most sacred heart of Jesus. This is important for us. We pray to St. John Hughes today to give us uh, his love for the most sacred hearts of Jesus and Mary. Let us ourselves become uh, promoters of this devotion this uh, indissoluble union of Jesus and Mary, the new Adam and the new Eve, the Redeemer and the co-redemptrix. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. Please remember to click subscribe and to hit the bell for notifications. And in this age of censorship, please consider helping support us at sensefidelium.com. Under the Donate and Support tab, there are plenty of ways to help support the work and to help grow and sustain the efforts of Census Fidelium in general. May God reward you and thank you very much.